nice and warm and toasty here inside the Congressium as we get set for our first match of the day. And this will be the junior women's team compound gold medal final. We're watching the juniors this morning. We're seeing the up and comers in this sport. I say up and comers, a lot of them already here. They've already arrived, Rio. Oh, 100%. Some, some of the juniors already are competitive with the adults. You know, they, they've shot scores similar to any of the adults. So it's always fun to watch and see where the up and comers are coming from. I think that'll be a real interesting thing to watch. Well, the first team out on the field is the team from Russia, Alexandra Savakova, 19 years of age, the 17-year-old Sofia Fadieva, and uh, the 18-year-old Diana Ravilova. So Ravilova, Fadieva, and Savakova. And the partisan crowd here in Turkey cheering loudly for the team from archery, or from Turkey, I should say. <laughs> They're all archers. It's early. Yep. It's early Sunday morning. Wherever you are in the world, whether it's Saturday night or Sunday morning, thanks for being with us. Gizem Elma Achla, 18 years old, teaming up with Evram Salam and Nevin Opta. The three archers on the field for Turkey, taking on the team from Russia. This is the junior women's team compound gold medal final. We already had the bronze medal match on Friday afternoon here in Turkey. So we get set now for these two teams to shoot the first arrows of the day. And you got the added pressure of being the home team. You and know, there is added pressure, isn't there? 100%. I've never been on my home soil that I haven't wanted to win more than not. Can work against you, can work for you. Yep. It. It's all how you channel that energy. 100% agreed. We'll see how the Turks handle that. The Russian Federation on target number one to shoot first. And that's been an interesting discussion, especially with our team the other day, is who do you want to start? Because it's really good for a person to come up and put a 10 in and let the rest of the team relax? Or is it you know, more important to have your best shooter at the end mm -hmm. and know that if you need it, it's there? Nine on the line. Exactly. Ravilova with another nine. A yeah, little bit of a rough start. There you go, there's your last one. I mean, is it? That's, that's the tough conversation with the team event. Savankova with the 10, sinks it right into the center of the target. So now Turkey's turn. Like I said, now the pressure's on the second one. I mean, it's, that's a tough conversation to have. In fact, I've seen Italy in the past few years in the finals put Sergio in the first mm -hmm. and then back up to the end and put him back in the back. Right, so you can change the rotation. Yeah, and so <laughs> partner picks it up. So. Strong effort right there by Okta. And now Elma Achla. All even. Yeah. <laughs> it's good to be able to have the eight out of the way and know it didn't hurt you. Know you're back to mm -hmm. even. Good, though, as you said, to have that person start off strong and yeah. feed off of that. Yeah. See, now we got a 10. We'll see how the, the second person follows up. Fadieva, unranked, 17 years old, puts it in the center of the target. Now Ravilova. And Russia has a deep staff of <laughs> women. You know, I've they, noticed. Yeah, I mean, we look at for years, they've always had, you know, from 06 when the Outdoor World Cup started to having, now they still have Albina and, and the good shooters in that program. Beautifully done. So after the two nines to start off, four straight tens for the Russian Federation. They fed off of each other. Now Turkey needs three straight tens. Yep. 
put a little pressure on them and see how you know how they handle it. Salam. Posting a nine. Emin olduğunda. Emin olduğunda. Bravo. So at best, Turkey can hope for a two-point deficit. Yep, that's it. An okay, it's a mount, you know, surmountable. It's manageable. They can, yeah, they can get back from that, but it's you really hate to fall too much. <laughs> and it goes back again to their anchor, bringing it in sure. with a ten to help kind of. Gizem El Majla with a pair of tens in that opening end. And Turkey will trail by two points right now. 58-56 after the opening end. Here on Compound Sunday in Ankara, Turkey, the Indoor World Championships. Rio Wild of the United States along with Carl Arkey. Glad to have you with us here on Archery TV. Bip, as you can hear, the hometown crowd is definitely into it. I mean. Out in force, yeah. fired up for the first match of the day. We are watching the juniors. The youngest archer, 14 years old. The oldest is 19. It's really, it's really amazing, Rio. I watch these juniors and I think about what I was doing when I was, there was one out yesterday shooting uh, Chinese Taipei. Su Jing King, I believe it was. I think she's 13. She wow. won a gold medal. I thought, what was I doing when I was 13? Uh, I'm wasn't with you. this. No, it was not this. <laughs> what were you doing when I you were 13? Throwing rocks? Playing baseball and all kinds <laughs> of other stuff. It was not this. <laughs> it's amazing. It is. And, and the sport just keeps continually to grow. And I mean, this is the whole future of it. You know, we've got a, we've got a good feeder system, and I think it's awesome. Some of the talent, some of the neat things that we're getting to see. And can you imagine, especially for these archers, if compound is ever, ever allowed into the Olympic Games. Uh, I think it'll be big. What big. a huge boost that would be. Big for the sport, big for everything. I mean, we, we look at the compound without government funding and, you know, how much it has grown. I mean, throw it behind it and throw some government funding behind it, it would really explode. And I think it would not take anything away from recruit. No, no, I think it would grow the sport as a whole. Mm -hmm. And I mean, oh, as oh, much yeah. as money's whatever, the more money that comes into it, the better it is if it's for everybody. Okta starts off. With a nine. Now, oh. oh, Salam. Another 10 right there by her first arrow hole, so. Starting to get dialed in. Elma Achla, <laughs> who has not missed on her first three yeah. shots. And tight, they're in the middle. There's no hanging lines or anything. She's been right there. Good bloodlines. Yeah. <laughs> Nine. Just a hair low. Padieva. Opening up the second den for the Russian Federation. Now Ravilova. And Turkey's got to start out for a little help. You know, I mean, as much as it's not insurmountable, but you need that little help because they've got some tens down there. Hope that you can get a little bit back. Might pick up a point here. Yeah. And maybe more. Well, both their anchors have been really good. They haven't missed yet, so. And there you go. Know. Yeah. But the deficit has been narrowed to one. Two nines for the Russian Federation, two tens for the Turkish team. Overall lead is 86-85 in favor of Russia as Turkey takes aim. Nine. Puts a little out of pressure on him because both every time she started off with a nine or an eight, and that's got to put the pressure on the second two. But they've seemed to handle it really well. Sakin. 
What do you think? Could be a tan by the way it kicked. You know, if it was straight in, it might be more questionable, but it did kick towards the tan line, so it could end up really good for him. That's solid. Both of their anchors have yet to miss a tan, so that helps the team out a lot. Gizem Elma Achla. Of course, a relative, close relative of Demir Elma Achla, who found great success in Mexico City last fall at the World Cup Finals. Nine. Not hurt by if that one's a 10 or a 9, so it could be really close right now. Ravilova, who'd won a team gold medal at the European Indoor Championships, putting up another 9 for the Russian Federation. Nine. Wow. And another 9. That's the first 9 missed by or shot by an anchor in the match entirely, so that's pretty impressive they've gone that far, but... It definitely will put the pressure on the Russians now. Makes the match that much closer after two ends. It was a two-point lead for the Russians after the first end. Now the Russians leading by one. And if that one's called a 10, we're tied. Exactly. You know, we're all knotted up, and that just adds more drama down to the last few ends. So the judges down by the targets. Scrutinizing those arrows, taking a look, getting out the sticks and trying to determine whether it's a nine or a 10 for Team Turkey. The Russians had a chance to put some distance between themselves and the Turkish team, and they just haven't really done that. Not yet. No. And the arrows change to a 10. <laughs> so we're all knotted up so now. Halfway are. point. 114, 114. It's a new ball game. That fires up this crowd even more. Yeah. Now, if you're the Russian Federation and you're on Turkish soil, there's Demir El Machla cheering on Gizem El Machla. But is it intimidating for the Russians? Is it tough? to compete in these kind of circumstances? You know, I, I, I've had um, both ways, and sometimes it's more. I like it a little bit. Uh, Derek Jeter, the professional baseball player, used to say he loved it because it would just he'd love to shut up the crowd. It was exciting, and, and he just added that little extra drama. But to me, I enjoyed it. Some people, it could add more pressure. Sometimes those road wins are a little bit sweeter than even the home yeah. wins. Yeah, and again, she starts off with a nine, so. But Eva. Ravilova. Nine. Another nine. Yeah. They had the last three arrows of that first half that really were what kept what got them their lead and just haven't been able to capitalize on it since. Yeah. She's back in the middle after the one nine first nine by an anchor. That's Salvankova finding that sweet spot again. Salvankova, probably the most experienced archer on this Russian Federation team. As we now go back to Team Turkey. That's huge. Yeah, huge. Because like I said, it, it takes the pressure off. It, Let's them realize that they can just shoot their arrows, and it's just a good. So Okta, 14 years old, starts off at the 10 and 9 now for Evrem Salam from Istanbul. Yeah. But the nice part is a 10 and they gain a point or 9, they, uh, there's no big loss. We're still tied up. So the pressure's not nearly as bad as it has been. Elma Achla has delivered before, and nine. this time... Mm. Just a hair low. First time outside the center yeah. circle. So still all tied overall, 142 yeah. apiece. It's a good back and forth match. I mean, we've gone from Russia leading to Turkey coming back. It's just a good match. 
Good way to start the Sunday morning yeah. here in Ankara, Turkey. The 18-year-old Ravilova draws it back. Ooh, just a little bit high. Yep. Definitely opening the door. Savankova, team bronze medal in Neem two years ago. And you can see why she won three medals in the 2013 Youth Championships in China. Yep, definitely, because she's, I mean, other than the one arrow, she hasn't had a hiccup at all. That's a good way of putting it, hiccup. Yep, that's it, exactly. <laughs> I mean, with the equipment today, it's amazing how consistent and accurate it is. It's usually you that makes the mistake, not the equipment. <laughs> Operator <laughs> error. Exactly. Yeah. When you come into an event, you know, man, my stuff's really shooting good. It's usually the guy behind it than versus the car you're driving. And of course, a master craftsman never blames his tools. <laughs> exactly. <Yes>. One hundred percent. All right. So a ten here gives Turkey the lead. Of course, we do have that 1-9 for the yep. Russian Federation, which could be a 10. So it could be a one point later, could be even. Yeah, it could be 100%. And I think by looking at it, I think it's just a hair low. So we'll have to see what it comes up at. But I think she's on the edge of a low side. Russian Federation got to the gold medal match with a 14 point win over Iran, 234 to 220. The Turkish team getting into this gold medal final with a three-point win over Italy, 226 to 223. Right now, these uh, two trios, <laughs> the Turkish fans fired up on Sunday morning. That's I good want some of that energy. <laughs> yeah, it's good to see that support out here. It is. Yeah. It's great to see it. The arrow's in flight. Only 18 meters, but... Small, small target faces 18 meters uh, away. Yeah, I mean, that 10 being the size of a penny, a US one cent coin is a huge, I mean, a guy don't realize how small that is. And, and, and the pressure, I mean, you're talking, these guys are shooting for a, for a bronze medal here. And that's, you know, no matter what happens or whatever you do, that's always something you can say you've accomplished. So it just adds that extra pressure to them to try and that was a 10, apparently. Yeah, I was wrong. A little it was a 10. Yeah. We're tied. 171 apiece. With six arrows left, it makes for a really fun match. Russia had a two-point lead after the opening end. It was tied at 114 midway through the match. Still tied at 171 all after three ends. And we head down the stretch. The Russian Federation and Turkey. For the compound junior women's team gold medal. They've both done really good on time, too. They really haven't had to rush, it looks like, and stuff like that. So they're getting through the, the team system pretty well. Yeah, I always feel for the anchor who's shortchanged. Yeah. You've been there before. I have been there before. That is definitely, <laughs> it makes for a little tougher deal. No. It gets the heart started, doesn't it? It does. I, I, you know what, all honesty, I like it. I enjoy that little rush of like five, four, you know. And the adrenaline just, starts yeah. going. Yep. In fact, they laughed yesterday, the other day when we shot our team event. If I shot an arrow under five seconds, it was more inside out than it had been on the other one. So and there's a 10. I think that's true. A lot of people perform better under pressure. They may not like to do it, but the results are better. Yes, yeah, so I, I don't love that whole crazy heartbeat, but my little <laughs> brother always tells everybody that I feed on it. I don't know why. I think Logan's watched you long enough to know. Yes, yeah, he has. And he's been shooting good this year. I mean, he got second in Vegas. That's a pretty good accomplishment yeah, you compared guys, to anybody. It was fun watching you guys down in Las Vegas. We'll get to see the guy who won. Yeah in Las Vegas big time. Yeah. Coming up this afternoon, Sergio Pagni. Yeah. And this Russia with a 10-10-9 definitely puts the pressure on Turkey cuz I mean we've only seen 130 shots. So. Okay, so there's the 9 that they're allowed to have. Yeah. If you can put it that way. Yeah, in a, in a way once somebody shoots a 9 it does give you a little leeway, not that you 
should be able to shoot another one. I mean, if you want to win, you got to get that little lead. They definitely have to have a 10 right now from Salah. Salah, sure. yeah. who won a team bronze in Yankton. Comes up big right there with a 10. Yeah, and their anchor that's been really solid is, you know, it's nice to have them walking up and know that we need a 10. She's been able to perform it so far today. Gizem Elma Achla. Just outside. Just outside, so three arrows left. We got Russia with a one-point lead. Of course, it could be a 10. Yeah, I, I, I was wrong last time, but it looks just a hair high. So unofficially right now, Russia with a one-point lead, three nine. arrows to go, but a nine right there. That's critical. Yeah. Ladieva. And these, are, these arrows are the hardest three to shoot. I mean, you're down to the nose, you know, you get the whole Buffer game right there on the line, and, and three arrows. You know, there's nothing more exciting than the last three arrows. Nine. Ooh. Another nine. Oh. Ravilova. Samankova. Trying to salvage this end, and she's outside the 10 ring. Three straight nines by the Russian Federation when it matters the most. The door is definitely open. Yeah, and it should give them a little chance to settle down and relax and shoot three good arrows. We'll see if the pressure for them to, to come through on the bronze medal is there or if it's not. 14-year-old Nevin Opka with a 10. She's fired up. Big time shot. Nine. Salam. That's one of the hardest part being over in Russia's deal. You got nothing to do now. You just hope and pray that they give you that little slight chance to get in there. It's out of the hands of the Russian Federation, yeah. entirely in the hands of this young woman. Who's been rock solid. 18-year-old Gizem Elma Achla. Oh! And we're tied at 227 apiece. Well, we've got that one to call. That's true. So, I mean, you can see them all kind of hoping, and is that one in, is the one in? And, and there's nothing worse than putting it in the hands of the judge now to sit there and go, well, am I going to get the call? Am I not? Is it there? Is it not? It was that third shot in this fourth end for Turkey. Gizem Elma Achla's first shot of this fourth end. They put up the star by it. It's a nine unofficially, but let's see what the judges have to say now as they go over to inspect the target face. And out comes Look at them getting in there. Yeah, out comes a magnifying glass, and you just, that is the hardest part in the world is to sit there and say, man, is it in, is it out? And, it, and it's judgment It's a judgment calls call. Are so hard. Yeah. So hard. And but these guys have experience. They do have They've experience. They've got years and years yep. and years of experience doing this. Some of the best in the world. And, and I mean. He's looking at it from every possible angle. Yep. Let's see. We're going to get the call right now. And I think it's going to go Turkey's way. They seem to think so in the stands. The Turkish team huddling up, all hugging each other. Hoping, praying that that's a 10 and they can celebrate a gold medal. Well, that's another thing you learn with a, an experienced agent down there. Yeah. Uh, usually, as soon as the arrow's called, if you have a good one, they give you a thumb. There, there you go. There it is. Yeah. Victory for Turkey. It was indeed a 10. Tamir El Maachla leading the cheers. Very proud of his little sister. And she performed well. She had one nine the entire match, and, and a team event, especially in the last part, to do that, that's a, that's a great achievement. And listen to this crowd. And look at those tears. Yeah, it's always extra special to do it on your home country. Nothing, I mean, I remember winning the World Cup in Ogden. My wife and my little girls were there. It, that is one that still stands out to me. You know? Brings tears to your eyes. Yeah. Those are tears of relief and tears of joy. 14-year-old right there, Salam. And there they are, world champions. Salam, 14 years of age. Okta. No, excuse me, Okta 14, Salam 19. 
And El Nachla, 18 years old, they're world champions. And here's the form and the style they used to get the job done. Yeah. Okay. Go. Devam, Devam, Devam. So now Gazem can go to dinner with uh, Demir. And I've got a world title. What have you got? Yeah. <laughs>